Hi y'all. Welcome to my backyard again. I wanted to give some introductory Rolf movement with real world application. As you may know, I love getting out in the backyard and digging and throwing rocks around. And one reason that I'm able to do it is I keep a sense of flow in my body. So this is about that. So first let's talk about what that means. And this is kind of the Rolf movement part. Rolf movement is about the how more than the what. It's about finding ways to connect in your body it involves a more complete, a more sensate, a more self-aware, but not self-conscious, use. I want to keep flow in my spine. I want to keep connectedness through my body, through my muscles. So this is actually today about a connectedness. I think of these muscles I'm about to show you about as really par excellence about getting the ability to connect with breath and with power. Power is what? Power is strength over time, right? Mass times is distance over time. It's the ability focus your energy in a way like you think about what martial arts does it's like using all the available fulcra all the available leverage for your effort and this is doing that too so martial artists take note yoga folks take note but also just in your daily life so today I want to talk about the use of breath through sides of the ribs, the muscles that connect the shoulder girdle to the rib case. Talking about the deepest stabilizers for the shoulder girdle, serratus anterior. So there's a quality of those upper ribs, they can kind of breathe, like my creepy blue fingers right now. <laughs> well, I got the garden gloves on for a reason and you'll see. So when these muscles are free and working well, this is where they are, kind of the back of the armpit. They connect to the medial border of the scapula. They go on the ventral surface of the scapula, which is the belly side. And they wrap around and attach to these ribs here. These are ribs, yeah? So that's a rib too. So when I know how to use those muscles appropriately, they, go, they allow the movement of the ribs in the breath. They keep freedom in the breath. They actually help the upper ribs move with breath. When they're in dysfunction, they are part of this posture, yeah? That pulls things forward. So let's look at this. Make sure not to stomp on my new little plant. Do I disappear? Not quite. Almost. Let's do this standing. This is a swim noodle cut in, I believe, a third. And I put a piece of PVC inside. Makes it really good for this particular work. So notice when I have my hands on this, I can keep them soft, but connecting. I can feel the whole circumference of this object. In Rolf movement terms, we talk about holding something 
with a sense of awareness. One way to put it would be to grasp this without grabbing it. That would be grabbing it. So I'm keeping awareness along all the surface of my hand. And as I do that, I feel the connection up into my armpits and shoulders. And I'm also aware that every movement of my hand creates a movement simultaneously in the shoulder joint. Very subtle, but it's there. So now I'm finding a way to feel that connection into my back. So remember I talked about connection. This is about connection today. So now, I'm gonna keep that sense of connection and add movement through my legs. Kind of like a lunge. Yeah, that's a good one. So I'm feeling connection now into the earth. From my heel into my pelvis, into my back, my whole back. into the backs of my shoulder blades, into my armpits, into my hands, from the ground. I have a harder time with my right leg, which is ironic because I have no cartilage in the left hip. And that just means that my right leg is getting overused. There we go. Connecting with that heel, pelvis, back, shoulders, hands. Full body breath. So, What's the real world application, you ask? Here we go. So I wanna take that same feeling into something very vigorous, but I wanna keep the sense of connection, hands, armpit, breathing, breathing into my back, pelvis, foot into the ground, getting power from the ground. Which muscles are bigger for most of us? Hips or shoulders? Think about it. When you do a work outside, any kind of heavy labor, you want to focus the work from the powerhouse of the body. Now that's a term borrowed from Joseph Pilates, many others. I used to teach her Romana Krasinowska. She was a direct disciple of Joseph Pilates. Believe me, I heard a lot about the pelvic powerhouse. Let's see if I can get this in camera. There we go. So I have a video up on my Facebook page already about working with this, but I want to detail it a little bit more. So in that video, I talked about using the full swing of the pickaxe. Very good idea, but how do you get there? You connect from the ground, the pelvis, the back, breathing into the back of the armpits. Ideally, you feel like there's no work, no work at all in muscles that typically get overworked. We wanna feel no work at all in the arms and shoulders. No work at all in these big lower back muscles. They'll be working, don't worry. But try to keep the feeling of efforting out of there. So 
So what I mean is, feeling the breath, demonstrated that sense of connecting through the feet, taking the weight into the feet, transferring the motion up through the back, arms, into the pick. So I take my awareness into this as an extension of a breathy, open quality. Looks like we're still going, we had a little blip. Okay. Feet, back, pelvis. Swing it from your pelvis. Swing it. Also drop down through it. So that's gonna mean I'm learning some habits, right? because you're probably used to doing it like this. Do it from where your power is, the ground. Transfer that up through your body into, in this case, the garden pick, into the area you want to work. Here's another one. I particularly like this one. Can you use a rake as if it were an extension of this quality of breath, connection, power from the ground, but really tries when you can. Now I have raked a lot of rocks lately, Can't this doesn't work with rocks, but with dirt, you can imagine it's like cake frosting and you're literally using the surface tension of the dirt to sculpt the surface of it, to change it gently. So it becomes more like stirring water. Believe me, if you've done this raking for a few hours, you will appreciate this advice. Same thing, finding the ground, Find the connection up through the body, finding breath in your back and shoulders into this muscle, the serratus anterior muscle, which just think the connector, the way to connect back and arms without overpowering either one. And to stir gently. I like to think of this as an extension of the breath when I have to do a lot. You can think about those um, martial arts movies from China. <laughs> well, I don't know if these are old martial arts movies. And they'd have the disciple have to stir a big vat uh, full of laundry or something. And the master would make them stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it until they became the master of using the spear or the staff. So it's a little like that. Think of stirring it with energy rather than muscling it. Now, <clears throat> one more. Shovel. Now, um, this also takes some real focus at first to find the ability to do this in a way that's more or less integrated, that's using your whole body. Now, the purpose of my work in general is to get more of your body, more of your body, more of your body as, a, as your body connected and working together, more like a symphony orchestra. I mean, a symphony orchestra has to listen and play together even when they're playing the most dissonant of pieces of music. You know, they can be playing a Zanakis or, or a Pederewski. They really have to listen to each other and work together, even still. So same thing here, even with the most 
difficult and effortful activity, you still want to keep as connected as you can. So you could kind of think of this as the martial arts movie <laughs> of garden work. Okay, so. Finding the connection through the ground. Decide how much dirt you want to get. Switch sides regularly. Do it from the ground, do it from your back. Do it from your pelvis, not your arms and your chest muscles only. They all work, of course they'll work. Find the fulcrum of the shovel. It's down here, it's not here. This makes you use these muscles a lot. Can you imagine that? Uh, right here. I'm finding it from the ground, getting underneath the fulcrum and move. Now another thing that I've discovered doing a lot of this work, you can throw dirt a long way. I remember living in Germany and watching laborers throwing all kinds of stuff to each other long distances up a scaffolding paved stones, all kinds of crap. So you can also do the same thing. You, you can have a, a shovel. Can you throw it also from the ground, pelvis, breath, right? But this all roots back. To this different way of feeling into movement. Can I find the softness in my hands? Can I find the connectedness with my breath? <laughs> I just changed my lighting. Once a dancer, always a dancer. Okay. Have a wonderful day.